August 1st, 1914. After the assassination of Prince Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire declares war on Russia. Because of established alliances, France is preparing for conflict. A few hours after the announcement of the general mobilization, German civilians living in France are asked to leave the country. Karl is one of them. My dear Marie, we are on our way to Paris. The atmosphere here is strangely cheerful. I hope that the harvest goes well. Rely on our neighbors for help. They've always been gracious and charitable people. I'll write again as soon as I get my assignment. Please kiss my little grandson for me. At the train depot in Paris, trying to reach his regiment at Platform 21, Emile would meet the man he would soon fight alongside, the man who would come to be his truest friend. Thank you very much. I'm free. Well, you flew. Listen. Good luck, my friend. August 21st, 1914, Emil's regiment was sent to fight against the 71st German Division led by Baron von Dorf. The general cheer of the first hours dissipated into the fear of first combat. Freddy, originally from America, enlisted voluntarily in the French forces at the start of the war. Behind his bravery hid a man already devastated by the war's effects. A man with one sole obsession, punish those who had destroyed his life. It was at the Battle of the Marne that Freddy finally picked up the trail of the regiment commanded by Baron von Hof.
Thanks to support from British forces, the German plan failed. The front line moved back to the north, and with the arrival of winter, froze. Soldiers holed up amid a vast labyrinth of trenches and tunnels that would become the indelible image of the Great War. Carl's regiment retreated to the outskirts of Neuve Chapelle, the same camp where Emile was being held prisoner. We live in a climate of uncertainty. Germans use the people of Saint Miel as human shields against the French bombings. I hope the Germans treat you well and that your wound has healed. Your grandson sent you kisses. I sent you a picture of him. All my love. Please write soon. Adieu, Clown. The British troops continued their attack on Neuve Chapelle. Their next objective take back Port Arthur. Amidst the never-ending attacks and counterattacks, Freddy and Emil hunted the elusive Baron and his regiment in Ypres. On April 22nd, 1915, chlorine gas was used for the first time by the... Her name was Anna, a Belgian student living in Paris. She was hard on the trail of her missing father. For once, fate smiled on them. They were all going in the same direction. But while approaching Vimy, a German squadron spotted them. Von Dorf had escaped again, but Emil had still managed to find medicine for Freddy. Thank you, my friend. They were quickly back on the road again. Their journey would take them to Reims, where they would at last pick up the trail of the elusive Baron and his Zeppelin.
Anna was training to be a veterinarian when the war broke out. The Germans were only 20 miles from Paris when she received a letter from her father. He was in good health, but implored her not to return home to Belgium until the war's end. Patience, however, was not one of Anna's strong suits. September 7th, 1914. Taxis drove all night. Anna was proud to help the soldiers reach the front line. When Anna arrived at her destination, she discovered the horrible truth with her own eyes. Seven months went by. Driven by compassion, Anna devoted herself body and soul to healing the wounded and the sick. Every life saved was another small victory over the war. The conflict, however, raged on. The French officers were talking about Belgium. The German army was about to experiment with a new weapon near Ypres, Anna's hometown. Anna got en route to warn her father about the imminent danger. Reaching the outskirts of the city, Anna was greeted by the screams of sirens. The deadly gas was already here. What is it? The governess revealed to her that her father an imminent scientist had been kidnapped by Baron von Dorf, who was eager to use scientific advances in warfare. Anna set out in pursuit of the Baron and encountered Emil and Freddy. Destiny brought them together. They had survived the enemy's wrath. Their gunfire, bombardments, gas attacks. Now, with her father within reach, Anna wasn't going to let him sleep. Victory had a bittersweet taste for Anna. Carl, seriously wounded, had been sent to a POW camp. 
Anna's father had disappeared with Baron von Dorf, and Emil was court-martialed for desertion. Cited for his bravery in Reims, Emil was fortunately pardoned and set free. Free to go back to the front. February 21st, 1916. Winter had descended on the front. After joining back up with the army, Emile and Freddy were stationed near Verdun, suffering like many others from the harsh winter. That morning, the arrival of the mail raised spirits, but Marie's letter did not bring good news. In San Miel, food was scarce, disease was rife, and the number of dead was growing. Out of this grim news, however, there was one ray of light, a photo of his grandson, Victor, standing on both feet and learning to walk. My dearest daughter, I heard from Carl. His condition is stable. He is still in the prisoner camp south of Reims. I hope to finally get permission to visit him. Thank you for the photo. I mean so much. cannon firing enabled Freddy yeah. and his regiment to reach the rear line unharmed. <laughs> Bravo, Freddy! Bill, thank you very much. The military hierarchy heard of their feats in battle and decided to decorate the two friends for their bravery. Emile received good news from Anna. Carl was recovering nicely. He was even walking again. Meanwhile, the battle for Verdun only grew longer and bloodier. The death toll was staggering, 70,000 per month. Almost one Frenchman and one German every minute, and it went on for 10 months, day and night. May 8th, 1916, Emile's squad was sent on a mission to take back Fort Douaumont a strategic point in the German defense. Despite the fort's partial destruction, the Germans held their position. The mission was a failure. My 
my darling. War has taken away a very dear friend. He was like a brother to me, and his death affects me much more than I could imagine. In happier news, Carl is safe from the trenches, and his condition improves steadily. I'll go and see him on my next leave. And what about you? How are you? Are things in St. Miel any better? Carl discovered things were not, in fact, any better. According to Marie's last letter, his son had fallen gravely ill. Carl had come to a decision. This war would never end. He had to escape. given a hero's welcome by the French forces. Emile wrote to Anna to let her know that her father was free and out of harm's way. Freddy and Emile's reunion, however, would be short-lived. May 14th, 1916. Freddy was sent to the Somme, while Emile's regiment was quartered near a small village at the top of a hill. The village was called Beauquois. This is where the conflict had moved underground. Holed up in their trenches, the two camps dug tunnels and galleries. The underground war had begun. Ready? Here come! Yeah! Oh, no! Eh! 
French officers were proud of the heavy losses inflicted on the enemy. Camille, full of anger, refused to be decorated for what he considered to be a cowardly act. Emile and Freddy were, however, happy to have saved Anna's father from Baron von Dorf's clutches. His scientific research could no longer be used to make weapons of war. Good news being few and far between, they wanted to savor this moment. But Anna had frightening news. Carl had been killed while trying to escape the POW camp. No. No! Upon hearing of his death, Emil became sickened with grief. September 15, 1916, the bloody Battle of the Somme still raged on. 206,000 British soldiers would lose their lives there. Freddy was commissioned to drive the newest weapon of war, a major progress in a conflict that was literally stuck in the mud. But Baron von Dorf was also counting on this battle to shine in front of his superiors. After too many missteps and too many battles lost, Baron von Dorf was demoted and moved far from the front lines. For him, a fate worse than death. January 18th, 1917. Emile, still bedridden, beseeched Anna to travel to San Miel to find his daughter and share the sad news of Carl's death. Anna set off immediately. Hey, I'm in my piece of Oh, this white boy. Oh, 
Their euphoria was short-lived, intercepted by German troops who still held San Miel. Carl and Anna were led to the officers' quarters for interrogation. Carl was sent back to fight for the Germans, while Anna was sent to the infirmary to care for soldiers. On April 8th, the French forces launched an assault on San Miel, an opportunity that Carl would not let slip by. While Carl was about to finally make it back home, Freddy was joining the Canadian troops stationed at Vimy. In the sky, George, a British aviator from the Royal Air Force, was spotting the German positions for artillery support. On this day, Canadian troops led the charge. After so many failures and sacrifices, the Canadians finally managed to take the hill back from the Germans. The United States' entry into the war grew more certain by the week. The last letter from Freddy's younger brother confirmed his country's newfound eagerness to join the fight. Carl was within a few hundred yards of Emile's farm when the rumbling of the French air patrols began thundering through the April sky. April 16, 1917, Emile was still sick. But the general needed every soldier who could stand to launch his big offensive. Once again, it was to be the battle that would bring an end to the war. <laughs>
The Nivelle Offensive was a bloodbath, a butchery. Soon, mutiny spread throughout the French infantry divisions, and the offensive was abandoned. Emile was jailed with the other rebels, waiting to be court-martialed. The dogs of war, man's best and most loyal friend, shared the same day to day as the soldiers. Whether carrying messages, saving the wounded, or sweeping for mines, they never failed to fulfill their duty. What? After weeks without news of a meal, Marie finally received a letter from her father. Aimé Chaillon.
Oh, I failed, Carl. I know my sacrifice has not been in vain. I fought for my country and my liberty. My honor is assured. Since it is the will of God to separate us on earth, I hope we'll meet again in heaven. Keep me in your prayers. Your loving Papa. Always.